Uh, hello and welcome back to another episode of our video podcast, Talking Trade. I'm Ian Coxhead at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And I'm Sandy Siegel, president of MEJ. And welcome today to Mike Dankler. Mike is a principal at Michael Best Strategies in Washington, D.C., and who I understand your colleagues refer to as who everyone goes to on Capitol Hill uh, <laughs> looking for guidance and, and analysis on trade matters. So really you know, excited to have you here on, on Talking Trade. Um, you, your previous 12 years were serving as chief of staff to Representative Jackie Walorski of Indiana. So I'm glad you've got some Midwest roots that, that uh, are relevant to us as well. Um, you've had a lot of involvement and contributions on the Section 232 policy um, that is, is the impact of the additional um, duties and protection on steel and aluminum, and you were involved in the exclusion process. So really timely, I think, to have you here on, on the recent agreement between the U.S. Um, and the EU regarding those, those Section 232 tariffs and the subsequent retaliatory tariffs that the EU had imposed on our goods. Um, so, you know, it's certainly a positive, um, a nice win. So tell us about your involvement, Mike, and, and some of the things, um, you know, that led up to this and, and some of the benefits you see and hope for. Yeah, um, thanks for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, talk with you today about my uh, favorite uh, section of uh, trade law, uh, section 232. So the favorite is 301, favorite. right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, and, and this does go back for me personally, um, you know, back to my time with Representative Walorski from Northern Indiana. So uh, she represents Elkhart, which is, uh, you know, the heart of RV country, about 85% of the RVs on the road come from there. And so, uh, but we also had major uh, pontoon boat manufacturers and cargo trailer manufacturers, horse trailers, you know, all sorts of just big things that use a lot of steel and aluminum. And so, you know, all those manufacturers in our district, um, you know, early on said, hey, what, what is going on here? You know, what, what's, um, you know, they, they flagged it for us. And so we, we did some digging and, you know, um, realized pretty early on that, that we weren't going to be able to stop the tariffs. So we, we honed in in particular on the exclusion process to um, just really, if, if that's the only way to get out from the tariffs, then, you know, it should, it should function. And um, I could do probably a whole doctoral dissertation on the problems with that, but uh, we're not here to talk about that. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and so now, now I'm with Michael Best Strategies and, and advising uh, clients on this. And, and so, you know, one of those key questions um, for Section 232 kind of writ large um, was, was what's the Biden administration going to do on it? Are they going to keep the steel and aluminum tariffs? What's their approach going to be overall? Um, I mean, it was, it was pretty quiet section of, of trade law uh, up until the Trump administration. So is it going to continue to be very um, busy? And so, you know, we saw earlier this year um, that they, they investigate, or initiated an investigation uh, into neodymium magnets, but then uh, lurking in the background was, was always steel and aluminum and, and how they were going to approach it. And, uh, and we got our first uh, bit of clarity on that uh, on Halloween when they announced this new agreement. And so, um, you know, some, some in initial takeaways that, you know, I had at least watching this um, was that, um, you know, this was, I, I personally thought that the EU was going to be an easy one. Uh, and it took until almost November to get a deal um, because the domestic steel industry uh, is, is still very much um, a major player on this. They have the ear of the administration very clearly, and they are going to fight tooth and nail for any relaxation of the tariffs. Um, so yeah. much so that, you know, they, you kind of got forced into agreeing to a tariff rate quota, which I don't think it necessarily would have wanted. Um, and so, you know, the good thing is, is it, it, it seems to be a template for, for growth. Um, so we have other creditors that are interested, um, but, um, but to the extent it took that long to get to this uh, to this point with, with an ally uh, like the EU uh, really said a lot about the, the, pro the political pressures that the Biden administration is still on um, despite, despite the tariffs. Right. Well, it, it seems consistent with what you know, many of us said in the change with the Biden administration that he was gonna look to our allies to fight bigger issues um, with China and some of our concerns with China and abroad. And, and I understand a big part of the agenda 
particularly with steel, was you know to fight against climate change and to you know have some green initiatives. So kind of another great political win. Um, can you talk about that a little bit and and you know the dirty steel coming out of China and and what the strategy there was? Yeah, and it seems you know a key priority for the Biden administration has been um, you know further interlinking and stronger links of, of trade and climate. Um, and so that's, you know, that's still been a little uh, unclear what, what form that's gonna take. And it, there's definitely some tensions there. We've seen, uh, with, for instance, with forced labor from solar panels with China, but, um, you know, the, the, in terms of steel, um, we've definitely noticed that the EU is moving forward or trying to move forward with this, this carbon tariff. Um, and so they, they targeted some, some very key industries early on, including steel. And so, you know, this, this may be the attempt, an attempt by the Biden administration to um, maybe try to head off some of that because, um, you know, to the extent that the EU starts to do that, then other countries may get involved and we may, we may just end up with this patchwork of, of carbon tariffs all over the place. Um, and so, you know, it seems like, you know, adding, adding that carbon climate uh, aspect to this, it, it accomplishes a lot of goals. It gets at China, um, you know, and, and promotes the the cleaner U.S. and, and EU steel. Um, but it also, hopefully, you know, I think the Biden administration probably hopes that it'll it'll also kind of head off a, a broader trade dispute uh, amongst friends on this on this carbon tariff as well. Yeah, really interesting. Now, uh, my understanding is that the the deal with the EU uh, excludes any. Uh, uh, foreign steel that is non-EU steel from the process so that the, the, the regulations go back to what's called melt and pour, right? Correct. So you can't have Chinese produced steel traded through the EU uh, added value and then into the US. And, and just going back to the tariff, or, tariff rate quota uh, point, uh, uh, so the tariff rate quota means that EU steel will enter the US duty-free up to a certain quantity and then after that, the original tariffs will apply. So do you think there's going to be any quota constraint that binds here that will the EU producers be able to meet their contracts and supply enough steel to the US side? I think that's going to be a key question. I think um, you certainly saw huge outcries um, when the US was debating quotas with um, you know, Canada and Mexico because um, they were just going to be so complex to administer. And, and we've seen it with Korea and others that agreed to quotas as well. Uh, and so, you know, the EU, a lot of trade flows. And, and so I think there's a lot of people looking at this implementation period and are saying, you know, okay, this is going to be pretty, pretty tough, pretty complex. And, uh, you know, they've, they've kind of muddled through it with Korea, but, um, but, you know, at least it, Korea has that hard cap. So there's, there's nothing above it. Um, at least there's the pressure valve of the tariff, uh, so to speak, right. with with the EU. So, but I think there's a lot of people are bracing for a lot of complexity there. Yeah, very interesting. And Mike, what about implications for the United States uh, in general, and especially for the upper Midwest? So taking away these tariffs lowers the price of imported steel and aluminum by quite a lot. Uh, what do you see if, how do you see that affecting the local economy here? Yeah, I think, um, well, and so the, go the ghost of Paul Ryan is kind of, had, had still been <laughs> alive and well, uh, even though he's out of Congress. Um, if you remember back back when the the 232 tariffs were first implemented, they went. Uh, the EU was very you know surgical, going after key items that were right. um, that were in the home states of of the you know Republican leadership, and that included bourbon for Kentucky and and Harley Davidson for uh, for Wisconsin. And so you know they and and all of those industries that were hit, you know they they knew what they were doing. They 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 knew which industries to hit that would that would hurt and. You know, um, we, we've heard a lot from those industries. And so um, this is a huge relief for them, uh, you know, for- Because they um, won't face retaliatory tariffs now, right? Exactly, yes, those retaliatory tariffs are gone. So um, so for the Harley-Davidson, you know, company in Wisconsin, uh, there was a lot of corn that was up there too. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think that's, that's gonna be a boon for exporters. Uh, and then when you talk about importers, you know, I think the, the price of steel is still very, very high. So you know, any relief there, uh, setting aside all of the supply chain constraints and container shortages and everything else, you know, everybody's looking for little bits of relief wherever they can get it. And so this, this will hopefully help, uh, you know, people on the ground, um, you know, get a, get a, a little, little bit of relief in a, in a tough time. 
Absolutely. Well, I can tell you as a customs broker, um, yes, a lot of importers looking for relief. And thank you for all your work on the exclusion process. Um, you know, a lot of customers benefiting from that. And, you know, again, a much needed relief in, in today's um, environment. Um, Mike Dankler, thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for all your work on the Hill. And um, I, hope, I hope to have you back on Talking Trade. Yeah, yeah. great. Thanks, Thanks for having me. me. Thank you very much. See you again. Bye.